Hello everyone. Welcome to today's lecture on bioavailability of drugs. This is me, Sanjay Dixit, a student of pharmacology at the Pan Medical College. So let us see as to what bioavailability refers to. Bioavailability, it is the rate and extent of drug that reaches the systemic circulation in an unchanged form. So this is there in maximum of the cases and because in most of the cases, the drug ought to reach the systemic circulation. So here it talks about the rate and extent of the drug that reaches the systemic circulation. And moreover, the drug should reach there in an unchanged form, that is before being metabolized, so that it is still in its active state. However, in some of the cases, like in topical use, it is not mandatory that the drug reaches the systemic circulation. So it can be defined as a measure of the rate and fraction of the initial dose of the drug that successfully reaches either the site of action or the bodily fluid domain from which the drug's intended targets have unimpeded access. That is, if you stumble across a chair, let us say, and you hurt your legs, then if you use a body, your spray that's a painkiller, then the, the spray the painkiller spray that it doesn't need to get to the systemic circulation, right? So it just being present there at the site of action will give you the response. So in that case, the drug does not need to get to the systemic circulation in unchanged form. Rather, it can get access to the site of action or the body fluid domain so that the drugs intended use uh, drugs intended targets have unimpeded access or drugs used can be seen. Let us see the picture that's given below. Here, it's a plasma concentration time curve, right? In this blue line, it denotes, it denotes AUC for an IV solution. A red is an AUC for an oral tablet, and green is an AUC curve or area under curve for oral capsule formulation. So when a bioavailability study is conducted, Actually, bioavailability studies are conducted in order to compare two or more products containing the same chemical substance. And we surely cannot compare different chemical substances because the apparent volume of distribution and elimination constant K can be different for different substances. So interpretation of the results is not possible if we compare, try and compare two different chemical substances. So bioavailability always compares two or more products that contain the same chemical substance. The route of administration and the dose of the drug have significant impact on both the rate and extent of bioavailability. The dose of the drug is indirectly proportional to bioavailability. For a drug with relatively low bioavailability, a larger dose is required in order to reach minimum effective concentration threshold so that the drug is able to show its action. The bioavailability also depends upon patient related factors and pharmaceutical factors. However, these two factors we are not going to discuss today. When we say bioavailability, it can either be absolute bioavailability or relative bioavailability, right? So absolute bioavailability is the bioavailability studies where it is done in relation to an IV formulation. Uh, Non-IV formulation is compared with the IV formulation. And relative bioavailability is the kind of bioavailability study where you assess the viability of a new drug with a standard drug. So FAB or viability absolute indicates AUC or by AUC IV. Absolute viability of the drug nimodipine that is given by different routes is as oral route 1.17% only, nasal route 67.4% and IV route 100%. Therefore, drugs when they are given by IV route, they are say, said to have viability of 100%. So the same formula can be extrapolated in a way that AUC extravascular by AUC intravenous. And if a different dose is given, then you multiply the dose intravenous out here and dose extravascular in the denominator. So FAB stands for absolute viability and AUC stands for area under the curve. Now, let us have a look at relative bioavailability. As we said earlier, this compares the bioavailability of a formulation of certain dead drug 
when compared with another formulation of the same drug, which is usually a established standard. Example, capsule versus tablet versus dissolved in water. So, bioavailability relative is calculated as AUC test by AUC reference into 100%. Absolute bioavailability means the amount of drug that is available in biological fluid at a time, whereas relative bioavailability means bioavailability in comparison to a reference listed product. There are also two different other terms like bioavailable dose and bioavailability fraction. The dose that is available to the patient is called bioavailable dose and it is often, often lesser than the actual administered dose since bioavailability is not always 100%. We just said that bioavailability is 100% only in case of IV, right? And in other cases, it can be lesser. So, when the dose is lesser, we calculate as to what is the percent, what is the dose, and that's called the bioavailable dose. Bioavailability fraction refers to the fraction of administered drug that reaches the systemic circulation. So, let us look at, into the objectives of bioavailability studies as to why are bioavailability studies conducted. Bioavailability studies are conducted for drug development so that suitable doses form is developed. Second, the determination of the influence of excipients, patient-related factors and possible drug interaction before absorption. All these factors are taken into account and this determination of influence is done by conducting bioavailability studies. You compare the availability of the drug from different doses forms or from same doses form from different manufacturer in bioavailability studies. Okay, so that is all for today. Thank you everyone. Happy learning. This is a part of cheat sheet for pharmacology on bioavailability of drugs. For more, keep tuned. Thank you. That's all. Good day.